Hey guys, it's Bad with Johnny Tech Review, and I hope you guys are having a good week so far. So after about a week of using the Smooth Q from Zizun, and I have here the Osmo Mobile that I have for about a few months now, I basically want to give you guys a review of this guy and kind of give you a comparison to this guy. I actually never reviewed this because there was plenty of review out there already, and I didn't have this much to say. But I'll go ahead and add some of my thought on about this guy here in case you're wondering about it also. So as I mentioned in my first impression video, I really am impressed with this unit. I do like the fact that. The hard carrying case is very nice and the apps are very similar to the Osmo Mobile so I'll show you that in a few minutes but anyway let's just talk first about the values and the build quality of this guy so first of all $139 and the Osmo Mobile is $299 so we're talking strictly MSRP and not sale price anything like that so $299 versus $139 uh, what you're getting with this guy is actually quite good. Um, the biggest thing I think I have issues with is this little grip here. It's a little bit more effort to do compared to the Osmo Mobile, which is much better. However, uh, I found that even with this plastic bill, it's actually pretty sturdy and it works quite well. I actually found that with the counterweight of this unit that is designed, you actually have a decent amount of actually counterweight for it. So using this iPhone 7 Plus here with this thin case, I'm able to do that and it's quite balanced. I can do the same using the Osmo Mobile, of course, but uh, this thing actually can hold a phone slightly larger than the Osmo Mobile, and the distribution is actually pretty good, and I'm kind of impressed with that. I think for the handling, uh, the grip is decent. Uh, if you look at the Osmo Mobile grip, as you can see, the grip here is much more beefy and has very nice texture, and it feels really well. On the Smooth Q here, you have a similar grip, but it's more smooth. You're not getting that texture feeling, and it doesn't feel as beefy. However, it works perfectly fine, and I really don't have much of a complaint about it. Recently, I went to Easter egg hunting with my kids, and I use this, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, the one thing that I do want to point out is the plastic arm here. The plastic arm compared to the Osmo Mobile middle arm. I found that with the plastic arm, when you're moving around or you're jerking around a little bit more, I feel like the, there's a bit of vibration, and the motor doesn't compensate as well. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. I feel like the Osmo Mobile does a better job at that aspect. But in general, um, yeah, it's pretty good if you just take your time and walk properly. If you guys know anything about the Osmo Mobile, it has this dirty effect that when you're walking, you get this bounce. And it's very annoying, especially in 4K, you can really notice it. And because I think, I believe, it's uh, the optical stabilization of the iPhone camera is actually fighting with the Osmo Mobile. And you will see some of that also with this guy here. For the series of video that's coming up, I will have the label at the bottom to tell you what it is. But basically what I did is I tested it in three different ways. I tested using the Osmo Mobile, I tested using the Smooth Q, and I tested using just the standalone iPhone 7 Plus walking around. All of this is tested on the iPhone 7 Plus. So basically, uh, without further ado, I want to show you guys a series of videos uh, that I shoot. I also will have a more detailed video of the comparison and uh, you can also look in the description box below for that or I also will put the little link on the video here somewhere. So based on the experience as you can see at the end, this is what I discover. I see that using both native app, either the DJI Go app or this app here for the Zizun Play, you will notice the, the 3D footage is not very smooth. I think the DJI Osmo app is a little bit better, but the Zizun app is kind of somewhat terrible. The app is layout the same, but uh, as far as the video, if you're not careful, you get a lot of sh shaky and a lot of jerkiness. So as when I switched to using the built-in iPhone camera app, it got better. Um, I mean, the same exact walk as you can see, it got better. And then when I switch it using one of the app that I dialed about for $2.99, it's called Pro Movie. Pretty nice app, but that app uh, has a built-in kind of like digital stabilization on top of that, and the footage came out really smooth. Alright guys, so this is the app right here when you launch it. Up top here you have uh, an option to connect to Bluetooth. So right now it's already connected so you have the blue light indicator there. Here you have the option to flip between videos and pictures. So here you have a button to flip the camera. So if we hit it real quick, it will just swap over to the front camera. Here you have a button to preview all your gallery. So all the video that you take previously, all the pictures, it's all down. And then at the bottom here you have this button here that's the tracking button. You can click on it once and you can draw a box like this and then it will try to track as you can see and it will start moving around and it get kind of stupid over here you have a battery meter and up here you have the uh, setting button which is really nice compared to the DJI I, I like the fact that you can pick quality uh, so 4k here 720p pictures you can pick all that here you can do a little bit of calibration here you can do 
uh, adjustment on the different axes here. You also have the general option here to show you the version of the gimbal and all that stuff, the firmware. Uh, so the only problem I have with this is every time you turn it off, it seems to not remember the settings. So next time you turn it back on, it seems sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of quirky. It will go back to 720p, so you always have to make sure you set it here. On the side here, you have the option to select a few different modes. So you have here default, slow mode, time lapse, and moving time lapse. And then here you have the button for the adjustment. So here, you, again, you can pick resolution and all that stuff right here. Here you also have white balance menu adjustment. So white balance, you have a few different options again. Also a custom mode. You have a menu mode, so you can go full menu on the camera, making all the adjustment, ISO and all that stuff. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because it's very small. Let me go ahead and turn it on here. At the bottom here, you have the adjustment. You can pick ISO, you can move all this, and you can do all these adjustments, but it's very small. Uh, I usually just leave it in auto and then set the correct uh, white balance, and then I'm pretty happy with it. Menu can be a little tricky, especially when you're on the run and you're gunning. Uh, here you have the grid which you, I can turn on here for example again it doesn't remember your setting keep forgetting it I don't know why the app need to be updated here you have the gimbal option you can set the scene mode in the scene mode you have uh, walking and motion motion is like running you can also have the option to make your own and then make the adjustment and I call one here based on the adjustment of the gimbal you can name it something and it will show up here also uh, finally at the bottom here you have a button here that gives you some kind of I guess filter kind of like Instagram filter it will change the video here I don't use this at all because I shoot all my video and do it all in post, but yeah, that's uh, all the options you have here. Here's the DJI Go app. Look at this. Identical setting. Uh, pretty much the button is moved around a little bit. You have the option here to connect the Bluetooth. The scene mode is right here. You can do the same thing, motion time lapse. You also have here the camera setting. Very, as you can see here, very similar exact setting. I feel like the Zizun app is basically the copy of this. So at the end, basically, uh, I come to this conclusion. Yes, if you have the money or you get this on sale, it's quite good. Uh, I do like the fact that the battery is replaceable. You can move them around, but you will only get about four or five hours when this guy, well, this guy, you're getting 10 to 12 hours. Honestly, I haven't run out yet. I charged it last week when I first got it. I used the crap out with probably six, seven hours already, and it's still perfectly working fine with no problem. So the battery on this is quite powerful. Of course, you also have the power bank option. You want to use that? I personally don't use that. But uh, you have that option also if you want to try that. Um, some of the quirk of the Zizun that I want to point out. First of all, if you use the Zizun Play app and you're trying to do motion time lap, it works quite well, no issues there. But if you're trying to do face tracking, which it does has, it's very similar to the DJI Osmo. You basically click on a little button at the bottom left corner, you drag your face or whatever object you want to track basically. It will try to follow it. Uh, a lot of time it just get lost and start moving around like crazy. So as soon as you track it, you will want to press record, then it will try to lock on. But then the video, the video that you're watching is very laggy, uh, where the DJI Osmo is very smooth. So that was one of the big things that I noticed. So tracking is not so good. So I wouldn't consider that good. But I think that is something that they can fix with the software or the firmware update. Uh, the other thing I really like is you have the additional companion uh, assistant app that you can use to do calibration and those kind of thing. And it's pretty nice. You can use a phone like this, just any phone. You can record on that and turn this on. It will automatically stabilize the gimbal. And then you can use, uh, you know, the other phone connected to the Bluetooth here, and then you can remotely control it. Well, why does that matter? Well, uh, use really cool tripod thread. It's really useful. You can mount this on a really long telescopic pole. You can have it up really high like a crane or a gyps, and you can move it around. And then you can use it uh, using the app here. You can control it remotely, so you can have it controlled remotely, which is quite nice. That is not something that you can do with the Osmo Mobile. So guys, basically at the end, uh, it you get this for cheap, the DJI Osmo, I would suggest going with it because I do like uh, the, the build quality. I do like the fact that it's, uh, you know, it's very, the app is very nice and it has a lot more full flat features and it's uh, pretty run pretty smooth. But if you're using it with an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus with uh, optical image stabilizing on the lens now, so at the time being, uh, with the Apple do not have an option for you to turn up the optical image stabilization, you better up using an external app and both of them when it compared together the video footage are really quite smooth. So guys, that is basically my quick review of Zizun Smooth Q. I really think that for the price, uh, you're getting a lot. $139 is a really great value. And also, you know, a lot of Kickstarter are $150, $200. Those are not gonna be, you know, those are not tested. This is a product that already exists, so you don't have to worry about waiting and you can order it now. So other than that, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box down below. I'll try to answer it. And again, I'll leave a link in the description box if you guys want to buy it. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. And I will continue pumping out more review videos and more fun drone videos. And hopefully another giveaway coming soon. Thank you guys. Have a good week.